Vincent Lucia. This is Hope Mike, and we're now back to the second segment of our program. Uh, when we left off, uh, Mr. Seri highlighted the details of where we were and where we are today and part of the reasons. But I now call on Mr. Fernandes to highlight some of the areas that he has been very involved with his brother, who used to be one of the greatest farm, uh, banana producers, but today he is sort of take another direction. Can you just highlight me? Yeah, we had a beautiful uh, introduction there, Mike. I, I must applaud you for that. But uh, these are new times and changing times. And so we need to stick to, this, to the point here, the subject of bananas. And on that score, it is great news, I would think, to all of St. Lucia. Like I'm a friend to Michael and Mr. Seri here. I must say that I am, more than anything else, a great friend to St. Lucia. So when we hear the subject of bananas being spoken and how so many farmers have been marginalized and are now dysfunctional, nothing is happening, and the unemployment rate being so high, this must be good news. News that will speak volumes for the number of farmers that we have out there who are waiting for something to happen in their lives again. The country has spoken, and so we have to accept that the, the voice of the people is the voice of God. On that score, we are looking at, and I'm not speaking essentially for my brother, we have been together for umpteen years. I grew up in the banana industry from inception way back in 1959, and I have moved in other directions over the years private business and in the public sector as well. But let me tell you when I think of my brother and the several discussions that I have had with him up until yesterday, I must tell you my brother Roland of Fort Estate is a consummate farmer who produced upwards of 5,000 boxes of bananas in the heyday of bananas on his estate at Fort Estate. And for several reasons, through the demise of the industry, we saw that being reduced considerably to three and two thousand boxes and when things were bad certain events like the draft that we had at Christmas a couple of years ago and Thomas, Hurricane Thomas, all of these things have affected people but more than anything else never mind the demise of the industry farmers are still hopeful that something good is going to happen we are still in a position within the Windward Islands, like Peter was saying a while ago, Mr. Seri, that we are still producing bananas to St. Vincent, to Green, um, Trinidad, and Barbados. But a large share of our production actually goes to the United Kingdom. And the United Kingdom still remains hopeful that Windward Islands bananas, especially from St. Lucia, will be resuscitated on the market. So there we are, 14,000 tons in 2015. So far in the 20th week or thereabout, we are talking about 5,000 tons. That is just a measly drop in the bucket where bananas are concerned and the possibilities of what can happen with our association with Martinique and the UK and France. So St. Lucia, we need to wake up. I am bringing a sense of confidence about what is to come. We are hopeful and we have to move together. All those 12 and 13 and 14,000 banana farmers who are marginalized in the heyday of bananas, there is some hope that we can actually come back on stream, focus on bananas, produce as much as we would really like to, to participate in the 600,000 tons shortfall that France has been talking about. Now, St. Lucia, um, one of the greatest obstacles we have is all political. Now, I want St. Lucia to listen very carefully to what I'm going to say now. Winfresh is an organization owned by Grenada, St. Vincent, St. Lucia and Dominica. As we all know, St. Lucia is the only country today shipping bananas to the UK, 
in any quantity at all. But here is the catch, St. Lucia, that although St. Lucia has the majority shares in Winfresh, we need the participation of the other islands to come on board meaningfully and understand that if it's not working and the CEO is doing a job that is not bringing the bacon home to, 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 the, to the islands, he must be replaced. And I'm calling now upon the Prime Minister of Grenada, St. Vincent, and Dominica to revisit the situation where we have an individual who can really assist the islands. We have just seen what has happened in the general elections. Our economy sank to the doldrums. The St. Lucians spoke loud and clear. We have nothing against Dr. Anthony. There's no hate. It is a very simple procedure. A procedure where something is not working. Unlike anything else, you have a CEO of a company that's not producing. He has to be asked to resign. And unless we take this action, all what we do will be frustrated by one man. So the people listening to us today, the present administration needs, and I call upon Mr. Ezekiel Joseph, who I assume will be the Minister of Agriculture, to look very clearly at the future and take the necessary action, have meetings, and get serious. We cannot stay behind and suffer for one man. It's simply not acceptable. Now, there are many other areas that we need to focus upon. But before I embark upon that, I will ask Mr. Seri one more time to give me his further input, not so much on the detailed factor, but where are we going and what advice can he offer today to St. Lucians to bring that banana industry to another level? Now, uh, as far as the industry is concerned today, there is no question that it is threatened. Uh, if we look at the conditions now, the, the future is gloom. There, like any industry, any business and so on, there has to be constant injection of capital for renewal, for expansion, and writers for change, you know, diversify. The industry has been able to weather uh, a lot of storms in that the, 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 the product they sell to the UK has improved considerably to the period you may refer to as the heydays of the banana industry. Today, it is often said that our problem is that we seek too much our bananas uh, sold to the up, uh, upline market and we, uh, we demand too much and therefore we cannot compete. But this is not true in the sense that our bananas on the market has the highest value added. I mean, we get our fruit goes from the farm to the supermarket shelf. Okay, it's packed from the farm for the supermarket shelf. So there's a lot of packaging. And, and of course, even now, with this high-priced fruit, we are falling short of the demands, you know, with, with the supermarket. But I'll say this about uh, the, the banana industry today. And it is that this move to regional trade, I mean, the emphasis, to, no, emphasis or the increase in regional trade threatens the survival of the industry. Because the industries, the, the, the regional trade is very loose, okay? The standards required of the farmers in order to supply the regional trade it's non-existent. The middlemen or the people who buy, uh, buy not on a case, of, uh, a case of coming over, selecting the fruit they want and paying for it. They have their suppliers to send them fruit 
and they determine, you know, and, 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 they, and they determine what part of it is good, what part of it is not good, and pay. And so the amount paid to the farmers is very small. The percentage of loss is tremendous. And the farmers supplying the market have no respect. In other words, they're not guided. They are not informed of the specs that are to be maintained, met and maintained. And so the returns to them are so small that it is not enough or to plow back into the farms, in the farms. And so you have farms supplying the region in constant decline. And even as the demands increase from the UK's end, our ability to increase supply is almost non-existent because there is no capital flow in the industry. Farmers are limited. So this is, these are areas to be addressed. First, we have to address the, you know, uh, uh, we have to address the question of bringing up the standards of the farms, and that comes from capital injection mm -hmm. that has to be, uh, uh, that has to be Can done. Can you highlight one area, Mr. Serrier, when you talk of bringing it up to another level? G give the public an indication of where you, go, what, what you mean by that. Okay, for example, if you would want as Mr. Fruden says, you know, to, to be, or, or I believe it was you who said it, to bring production to a certain level within the next six months or so, so that you can meet some of the demands of the French. Uh, there are farmers good and ready to do that because most of those who have, who have left over because we have found no alternatives and some of the farms would need rehabilitating. But first, there would, be, there would have to be the labor side, which I think the farmers can be made to contribute to the labor. Then there is the, the question of the treatment of black seeker toker, which I mean there's a, there's a system in place. And I think we have resources uh, for the next two years that can take care of this. And the farmers' contribution would be um, very small. But mostly, the question of timely application of inputs, not just fertilizers, but certain nematicides and insecticides that needs to flow. And the standards are rigid because the, the standards bodies like Global Gap and Fair Trade are very strict as to what insecticides, nematicides, and so on can be used. Of course, this there has to be a proper program. It's a question of having a program and a strategy to implement it. What the farmers would need is the necessary fertilizers, get them to contribute the labor, you know. They need, because to control black seeker toker, you don't just have to spray, you must have the proper drainage, you know, you must have the proper cultural practices, and you have to, you know, um, pay attention. I mean, it is Can not I something- Can I throw a question at you, Mr. Serrier? In the, when the black seeker toker was at its worst in St. Lucia versus today. How much of the percentage of black sugar tour you think we have got rid of today versus when it was bad and what it is today? Today, black sugar tour is the least of our uh, problems. That's good news. Would, no. would there, are there any other diseases in the banana industry that we have to be um, concerned about? No, not, not, not really. There is, of course, nematode control and yeah. now, every now and then we have a little problem with it because we are restricted as to what nematicides we can use but that can be corrected because okay. as long as you present a program to fair trade they will allow you oh. a period where you can they'll yeah. recommend Watch certain us. nematicides you can use but it has to be properly super, supervised and so on okay so this is uh, uh, once the injection of capital in the industry happens and it is properly maintained, and I am 100% against giving money, you know, to farmers. Because it is, it is like anything else, it will not necessarily be put. Yeah, it, it, would, it won't be translated into good production. It, it, but they it, would it, waste it. it. Yeah. Yeah. They have to be. This but is, but, but they, have to have, they have to be a program, yeah. as I say, of assistance yeah. and a strategy to accomplish it. But 
uh, but the farmers must be made mm. to be part of it in that they have a stake in it. Yeah. For example, if, 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 if bringing it back would cost, um, you know, uh, ten million, ten million dollars. Yes. I mean, at least you could get twenty to twenty-five percent yes. of that from the farmers by way of their labor, their time, you know, capital, because you know, it contribution. Yeah. And I think it, it can happen. Saint Lucia, this is open mic, and now we have come to the end of the second segment of our program. We'll be right back.